Today I'm going to be talking about something that I'm sure that you've all experienced or heard about, and uh, that is stereotypes. Imagine walking into a clothing store to do some shopping. You've been here a thousand times before with your family and friends and never had an issue. You have plenty of cash in your credit card and have no reason to feel uncomfortable. Yet, as you look through the clothes for something that catches your eye, you get the all too familiar feeling of someone watching you. You stand up and you see a store employee quickly turning away from you, acting as if they weren't monitoring you as soon as you enter the store for fear of unwanted theft. Let me present you with another example. Uh, you have to deliver a presentation for your history class on a certain topic. The day that the project is due, you wear a button down in khakis because you want to look especially nice for your presentation. You get to school and you give your exposition to the class, fairly confident in your preparation and your conveyance of your topic. Despite your success, you feel as if something's wrong. The rest of the day, your classmates tease you about acting white and dressing white. Many of your friends even characterize your diction as talking white because of how intelligent you sounded. These scenarios, and countless others like them, are resultant of one of the most powerful and ubiquitous types of influence in our society today, stereotypes. Stereotypes are everywhere and created for every distinctive characteristic there is. Religion, gender, socioeconomic status, age, place of origin, etc. And arguably the most divisive characteristic in our society, racial or ethnic background. Now, I'm sure that you're all aware of the importance of a first impression. According to recent studies, it shows that it takes approximately seven seconds for someone to make an impression of you. In these seven seconds, people will ultimately make up their mind about who you are and the kind of relationship that you're likely to have with them. But what you may not know is that stereotypes have a great effect on your perceptions of others. Even if unintentionally, we create ideas about who people are before we even get the chance to meet them because of initial misconceptions that we have about the demographic that they belong to. These stereotypes are instated all throughout, of, all throughout society, and I myself have experienced them in school, in the real world, and in multiple other situations. Now, I'm sure that all of you have some, um, some type of social media, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, and for the older folks in the room, Facebook. <laughs> and even if you don't have some type of social media, you likely use the internet, play on the computer, call others on your phone, um, you know, you use electronics in some sort of way. And even though this technological interconnectivity has granted us so many new opportunities in the real world, they have also contributed to the reiteration and the development of stereotypes against everyone in our society. No matter how flawless you or others may deem you to be, there are stereotypes directed against you, even if you're not aware of them. Now, am I saying that all stereotypes are negative? Of course not. There are numerous positive stereotypes as well as negative for nearly every group within a population. Am I saying that only young African-American men have to cope with negative pre-existing perceptions of themselves? Of course not. I'm sure that there are so many of you who aren't who also experience negative stereotypes. But I am an informed young black man in the country of the United States of America. And it is my job to inform you of what I know to be true and what countless others are oblivious to. Now, I am constantly, constantly um, surrounded by other people and their conflicting ideals about who I am and who I should be. Why do you act so white? Why do you dress so white? Why do you talk as if you're white? You can all see me, I'm clearly not white. I don't understand why this continued perception follows me everywhere I go. The idea that my intelligence, my demeanor, my poise, or the life that God's blessed me with in some way makes me separate from my own identity, that being someone who is intelligent or ambitious somehow is only identified as white, that being black and possessing these same traits is inconceivable, is insulting, ignorant, and frankly, 
instilled in the minds of so many people in the United States today, the majority and minorities. Now, this idea of blackness has been, uh, has been perpetuated throughout society since the early 1970s in the birth of early modern rap and hip hop. Uh, the origins of this genre of music was to talk about the struggles in the real life situations of blacks in America and a creative outlet for, a creative outlet for the voices of a people. Now, as time has progressed, the genre has become more and more uh, centered towards less redeeming ideals. Although hip hop and rap aren't the only genres of music that black culture has pioneered, they are the culture that most people affiliate, they are the, that is the genre that most people affiliate black culture with. And as music has progressed to today, we have, as you probably know, um, heard lyrics and uh, popular rap music that don't contain positive or affirming messages, but rather are centered towards violence or sex or, or abuse of substances. Now, I'm not saying that this transfer of self-expression to demoralization and material goals, um, materialistic goals is absolute. I mean, there are numerous rappers out there who still believe that music can be used as a voice of a people um, and the power of music itself. One of my personal favorites being Kendrick Lamar. This is way too crazy, A. Hey, I do not know maybe, A. Hey, hey, Obama page me, A. Hey, and you all know maybe, A. Hey, this is that great Poupon, that A.V. Young, that TED talk. Now, <laughs> unfortunately, artists such as Kendrick Lamar are considered outliers in the hip hop industry today. Now, this, over, this overarching identification of African Americans um, through music has led to the perpetuation of stereotypes against our people. A powerful, a powerful example of how um, hip hop music has, of how hip hop music has affected the lives of multiple, of many young black men in this country is the United States prison system. Now, only 12 to 13% of this United States is composed of African Americans. Yet 37% of the 2.2 million men in the United States prison system is composed of black men. According to the NAACP, approximately a third of the 7 million people in prison are African American. And the incarceration rate for blacks in this country is nearly six times that of whites. Well, well, you might be thinking, maybe African Americans commit more crimes. Maybe that's why the imprisonment rate is so high. Well, according to the New York Times, sentencing, sentencing for uh, nearly identical crimes in nearly identical circumstances for a black man and a white man is two to three times as long for the African American who committed the crime than the white man. Under the, duration, uh, under the formula for the duration of one sentence, if a black man and a white man score the same number of points, a black man is sentenced to longer jail time in 60% of felony cases, 68% of first degree crimes, and 45% of burglaries. Now, I tell all of you this why, you may ask. Why is this important to us? How can this affect us? Well, systemic racism is too broad of an answer and neglects to, and neglects to address why it's still so prevalent in the justice system today. Well, apart from lack of representation in the courts and um, when it comes to law, um, the, answer is that, the answer is that it's created this overarching identification of young black men as criminals in society. That's, a, that's society, society's perception of us, which takes away from our opportunities and our abilities to be successful. In this, we are, we are disproportionately imprisoned and wrongly robbed of our lives, which doesn't make any sense because we're not able to show what we're capable of in this world, which everyone should have an opportunity to do. Another common misconception about young African Americans is what we can and can't do when they go into the world. Who already knows what they want to do when they grow up? Uh, you. What do you want to do when you grow up? Be a surgeon? That's wonderful. When you ask someone, when you ask someone in Af of African American descent what they want to be, many people will expect them to say uh, an athlete or an actor or an actress. But few people expect us to, as a people, to pursue something intellectual or something that uses your brain. So I'm very glad that you said surgeon. 
I am a junior in high school and am a student leadership in school, in church, in multiple nonprofit organizations. I aspire to pursue a profession in international business following graduate school. Who is the world to tell me that I cannot achieve that simply because of the color of my skin? In the world today, we see so many images of powerful black men and women on television and in social media, um, and they depict us, but we always seem to follow a certain path. In nearly all situations, we are actors, we are actresses, or we are athletes. But where is our representation in the world of academia and knowledge? There are so many bright, young, black people in this country, and likely in this room, who would refuse to embrace their intellectual curiosity, rather to pursue a more glorified path, which is success on the big screen or some athletic endeavor. I instead, I instead encourage you all to I instead encourage you all to pursue your dreams no matter what you look like, no matter, no matter what gender you are, no matter what race you are, no matter what category you may fall into, because success is not, success is not contained to a certain category of people. If a young African American man says he wants to be an engineer or a lawyer or anything that uses his mind and co contrary to what society expects him to pursue, who are we to say that he cannot achieve this? It is our goal as society to encourage him through determination and perseverance to be able to achieve anything that he wants to. I'm sure that you all have experienced misconceptions about who you are and stereotypes about who you are. And I'm sure that not all of them have been bad and you might have experienced good ones as well. But I am a young African American man and I am constantly being monitored and watched I am being watched to see if I trip up, if I make a mistake. I'm watched to see if I will fail because that's what I am expected to do. But I will continue to pursue my goals and nothing can deter me from the tasks at hand. I have, I have so many dreams and so many aspirations and I refuse to let the color of my skin impede my success. Stereotypes are a way, stereotypes are a way that society creates um, opinions about who we are, rather than you getting the opportunity to understand who people are themselves. If you have this bias within your mind, you couldn't possibly understand how many amazing people um, there are in the world and the amazing opportunities for relationships that you can build. And so I challenge you all to follow your dream, no matter what the circumstance is. And I challenge you to go out into the world with a lack of bias and an open heart and an open mind because you can develop relationships no matter where you go and who you talk to. Because the situation of who someone is is never truly as simple as black or white. Thank you.